So for this lesson, we are going to start by reviewing with the children what they learned the last time. And last time they learned that each fraction family had a name and that name corresponded to the number of pieces or the number of parts that the family was divided into. So you can invite the children to lay out the little numbers again as a review and then tell you what the names of the families are and then you can start with this lesson. So you're going to tell the children, do you know fractions have been around for a really long time? And basically, when we think of fractions, we think of dividing a number. Do you see how here I'm dividing this whole, just like this one, this whole into three parts? How many parts am I dividing my whole into? The children will say four. You can do a little bit of that with the children and then say, well, today I'm going to tell you where the name fraction comes from. It comes from ancient Rome where people used all of these ideas a very, very long time ago. Now in ancient Rome, they spoke a language called Latin. And in Latin, the word fraction comes from fractus. That's Latin and it means to break. So children just like you would go to school, but instead of writing on paper, they would write on wax tablets. So the teacher would tell the children, write one divided by three. But they wouldn't use the symbol divided, they would use the word fractus. So here's what they would write. One one fractus three. Oh my goodness, can you imagine how tedious it would be to write all of this every time you want to write a division. So eventually the children got really tired of writing one fractus three to mean one divided by three. And so they asked the teacher if it would be okay to erase most of the word and just leave the F and have the division be one fractus three. So the teacher said, well, yes, I actually like that. That's a good idea. Let's do it that way. So for a while they did it like this, but then eventually the children got tired and they told the teacher, teacher, would it be okay if we write one and then instead of the F, we just write a line and then a three. And we could still think of this line as fractus. So we could say one fractus three or one divided by three. And the teacher said, well, yes, I don't see why not. That is something we can do. So for a while they tried this and they really liked it because it was easier. But eventually the children even got tired of drawing that line. And so they told the teacher, teacher, what if we get rid of most of the line and just leave two little dots? We can call this fractus one fractus three. And so for a long time, people have used this symbol to represent division. Now today we have another symbol that I want to show you. Now, whatever I put under this line is going to tell me how many pieces are in my family, how many pieces I'm dividing by. So, how many pieces are in my family? There are two, it's the family of the halves. Right? And so when we look at this, we know that we're working with the family of the halves. Here, here we're working with the family of the thirds because we have the three under our fraction line. And what about here? We know we're working with the family of the fourths. And so you keep going with the children. And if you want, you can remind them that the fourths means that it's split into four equal parts. Once you've gone through all of the fractions all the way to the tenths, then you go back and you say, let's look at the halves. Here I'm taking one from the family of the halves. One from the half family of the halves, and we can read this as one half. We don't say one halves, but we say one half. 
Now I'm going to move this aside and bring the next one. And here's where you need 10 strips. Now I have the family of the thirds. I'm dividing into three equal parts. What if I take one from the family of the thirds? What do I call this? I call this one third because it's one piece from the family of the thirds. Let's do one more. We're going to do the fourths. Now, if I take one piece from the family of the fourths, then I've made one fourth. One from the family of the fourths is one fourth. And after you do the fourths, then you continue with the fifths and you let the children start to verbalize the fourths, the fifths, the sixths, all the way through to the tenths. Now, when you're done with this, there is a printout with tiny little fraction numbers and you will invite the children to place each one of those fraction numbers on top of the corresponding piece. So for example, for the fourths, you will have four little papers. Each one will say one fourth and you will place each one on one fourth. For the fifths, you will have five little papers. Each one will say one fifth and the children will place one on each little piece. And at the end, every single piece in the fraction set will have its own little number.